Hey guys, it's May May, and welcome to part two of our Christmas album. And this will probably be the last part of the project because I don't want this to turn into a huge mini album since this is only going to be something I'm going to use for a couple of months. But I actually think I'll probably save this in my Christmas decor um, boxes when I put them up so I can go back and look at them because I think it'll be cool. Now, I've done a couple of things ahead of time to kind of get us moving faster, but I'm going to show you what I did. I took this tab punch that I have. This was sent to me, by, to me by my friend Becca, and I love it. It's made by McGill. They are very impossible to find, this particular one. I have looked and looked and looked, but you might get lucky on eBay. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. But I love this guy. It does a two and a quarter by three quarters um, tab punch is what it is. It'll do a tab for your pages. And so I did a whole bunch of them out of white paper. I did the white because I wanted it to show up here. Now, if you're a clean freak or a germ phobe, this white's probably going to drive you up the wall. I'm okay with it. I'm going to try to be very clean with it. I probably won't, but you may want to use a different color for your tabs or even buy some store-bought tabs. That'll be fine too. Now, I went ahead and made, like I said, a bunch of these and I hand wrote December, November, food, budget. I hand wrote all of the little things that are going to go on to, um, or that I need tabs for. Now the other thing I did, I'm trying to find the one to start with here. There it is. Okay. The other thing I did was go ahead and put some adhesive in them just to save us some time. And the adhesive that I used is this thin one that I get from Punch Place Plus. I'll leave a link to that below. I love this tear. It's easy to tear. You don't need scissors or anything. I love it. All right. So here's the one for notes. It goes on the first page. And you know what? I think I'm going to start at the bottom. Should I start at the bottom? I hate to cover up any of this, but we're going to have to do that. So I'm just going to line this little tab up here. And I've already exposed the adhesive again, just to save us some time because this is going to take a minute. All right, so there's notes. And now I'm going to go to the first calendar, which is November. And then I'm just going to come over here and find November. And I have this set up. It's kind of like a memory game. I'm having to <laughs> search for it. Now here's how I do my tabs. I just look where my last tab was and I just kind of eyeball the next one, just hold it with my fingers like this, and I know it's going in this area, and I'm not stressed about is it perfect or ruler, you know, straight, everything measured out perfectly between each other. I just don't stress about that stuff, but if you do, you take your time and you measure it and do all the things you need to do. So now look, here's what I have. I have notes and now November, and now I'm going to find my December one. Again, it's like memory game over here. I think that's gift list. Let's see. December. I just had it, I thought. Maybe not. Here it is, December. Okay, so now I'm going to lift up November, find my calendar, and then I'm just going to kind of lay this in and see where I want it to lay. Somewhere like that, and then stick it into place on the top, and then I'll just bring the underside around and stick it. So there's my November and December calendars and my notes. Now I'm just going to go to the next section which is budget, and I have that word as well. So you can see how I'm doing this, right? Now I'm just going to lay December down, whole budget like this, and just lay this in here and get it about where I need it to be, which is going to be about right there. Place that side down, and then flip it over. And like I said, I put adhesive on both sides, the insides of both sides of the tab, so it'll stick. So you can see we're still going with our tabs. All right, I'm going to finish putting these in, and then we'll move to the next step. Okay, so as you can see, I have all of my tabs in, and I'll hold that this way so you guys can see all the tabs. So super cool and easy, and again, this is not a permanent thing I'm going to need for a year or anything. I don't mind it being just cardstock for my tabs, but certainly feel free to purchase what you need. Now, check this out. See this pocket? After yes, after a Wednesday's video, so many of you guys were like, don't forget pockets, don't forget pockets. You know I can't forget receipt pockets, right? Check this out. This is a magnetic closure okay and it is expandable can you see on the side how i made it expandable because i know receipts are going to take up some space and so i have made this with a magnetic closure for the back and i'm going to make another one for the front and that's what you and i are going to do so that i can show you how to do it now this envelope we're going to make is basically a policy envelope okay so i'm going to show you how to do this but i'm going to need you to hang with me because there's going to be a lot of instructions okay i'm going to turn this a little bit i'm going to tell you what we're going to do this is a 12 by 12 piece of paper and the first thing we're going to do is score at three inches our next score is three and one quarter our next score is three and one half Trust me on this. It'll make sense when we get done. Now we're going to move down here and we're going to score at eight and a half. 
whoops, got off track, no biggie, just go back at it, all right, let's score it again, eight and a half, all right, and then eight and three quarters, and then nine, so basically a quarter of an inch out from each of each other. So there's those first three score marks, okay? Now you're gonna turn your paper in your punch, just one turn to the left, okay? And now at the top, you're gonna score it at two and a half. I skipped again, I keep doing that with this paper, I'm not pressing hard enough. All right, two and a half, and then down here, we're gonna score at 10 and a half. Let's press hard enough so we don't skip. All right, 10 and a half. There we go, that's all your scoring done. Oh, that's why I had two pieces in there. <laughs> I kept thinking, why am I skipping? Now I know, only do one at a time, you'll get better score marks. Okay, so we need to do a little trimming away, all right? So the top of this, where we scored these three marks, the inside mark here and the inside mark here is the top flap of your envelope. We don't need these. We need them at the gusseted area, but we don't need them up here. So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna come in and just cut on those score lines. You're gonna cut away all the way to the centermost score mark. When I finish, I will show you what this looks like. All right, so you see what we did? We still have our three score lines down here, but we cut them away at the top. That's why I'm saying I need you to hang with me a little bit because it can get confusing. Same thing on the other side. I'm gonna cut all of that section away, leaving the fold down flap for our envelope. That's what the top is, that's our fold flap. Now we're gonna do the same exact same thing at the bottom. And when we do this, we're gonna leave our fold up flap that's gonna seal our envelope down. Okay. It's not as hard to make as I'm probably going to make it seem, but um, it takes a little bit of thinking because you got to remember that you're going to have a gusset in there. Now, before we do anything else, we want to clean this guy up. And what I mean by that is we want to make it that so when we fold these pieces down, these bottom flap and top flaps will fold without being pushed back. So here's how we do that. We're going to come to each side and do an angled cut, just about a quarter of an inch at the very edge and then just cutting to an angle like so. See how that goes to an angle? The reason for that is it takes some bulk out when we fold and it, it'll make more sense again when I get to that point. But you're just going to go to these edges and cut this angle to get that bulk out. Do it on all of these flaps. These are your outer envelope flaps. You want to do that on all of those. And I put my scissors about a quarter of an inch down on the outer edge and then just cut at an angle up to the fold. All right, so there's the first cleaning up we want to do. And then the next cleaning up I want to do is some corner rounding. And so I'm going to take my corner chomper and at this bottom flap, I'm going to round it on the one half inch mark just because it looks a little more like an actual policy envelope. I'm only doing the flaps, the top and bottom opening and closing flap. You see that? I didn't worry about the sides of the envelope, just the top and the bottom. Hang with me, we're gonna get there. All right, the next part, we're gonna start folding these accordion folds or scores that we've created. So I folded down the first one, which was even with both flaps. Now we've got this quarter inch one in the middle. We wanna fold it back out. We're just gonna kind of heel and valley this, okay? So I'm just running my hand up in there to make that a little easier. And then I'm gonna fold that down like so. And now we need it to come back in on this last flap. This is what creates the accordion. I hope that makes sense. I'm gonna show you again on the other side, but that's how we're gonna get our little bit of give, a little bit of expansion in that pocket. Now what I want to do is crease this down really well with a bone folder because I'm trying to not build bulk with this pocket. I know I'm gonna build bulk when I put my receipts in, but we want this to be as creased and as flat as we can get it. Now I'm gonna hold this to the side and show you basically what we did. See that accordion? We just accordioned that edge, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So fold up at the inside score line, which is even with the, this is the edge of your envelope, okay? Then we're gonna bring it back. It might be easier if you kind of take your bone folder and kind of help it come back, just by kind of pushing that in and lifting up. And then come to the side and lay that down. Crease it, just like that. And now we're gonna take this flap over. 
I was going to say this is an easy flap, but as soon as I say that, you see me have to start to mess with it. This one is usually easier. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Never say it's easy because then it's not easy, right? All right, then. All right, let's look at what we've done. We've got our flaps closed up and ready to go. We took that bulk out of the top and the bottom. So now when we fold these guys up, we're going to get no resistance. All right, for the closing of the flap, I use sticky tape. Again, I get it from Punch Place Plus. I love it. And here's what I do. I run one piece down the inside of the flap there that we created. Got that a little too, too long. If I don't cut that off, it's going to close my envelope up. So let me cut that to get it nice and neat and even. Okay, now let's go. I take the other side and run one down the inside here, and that way when they close over, there's adhesive on all of the flap where it touches. I like extra when I'm doing something like this because I don't want anything to fall apart. Okay, now then, pick this backer off, just like so, and this one. Now, because your envelope is accordion, do you want to kind of press that side down and then you want to press this side down, making sure your accordions are flat and then just kind of let it touch in the middle and then rub it down. So that way you still have your um, a little bit of thickness in the envelope. All right, some adhesive here along this edge, just like so. Not the top yet, because remember, we're making this a magnet closure. So we don't want to do that yet. All right, and now we can just close the bottom up. And because we did that angled cut, I did not get any resistance. I got a nice, clean fold. All right, let's do our magnet. Now, you can decide where you want your magnet to be. And on my last one, I did my magnet a little too high on my first pocket. I'm going to move it down. So I'm just going to do it something like this. I'm going to see where this flap lands. Yep, I like it more in that area. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take this little stylus and make a little mark for myself so I know where to put my adhesive. And this is how I do these all the time. I take a little sticky tape. Lay it down, then I open this up, just like so, and then put my magnet on it. And I know my magnet went closer to the bottom of that adhesive. And that adhesive is plenty sticky enough to hold it. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is take a little bit of adhesive and put it on the back of this metal piece. Now, these magnets I get from Punch Place Plus as well, and I don't use them as they are designed from what I understand. The magnets themselves can be used with two magnets. So you could have one magnet here and one magnet here. These little metal pieces come with her metal disc. Um, they're on the same page as the magnets. You'll be able to find them. And I like to use this little metal disc because it's not quite as strong as two magnets against each other because that is really, really strong. All right, so I've laid that little uh, metal, piece, <laughs> metal piece, that metal piece on top, and I'm going to close this flap over and pick that up. So now I know that that is in the right place and that is in the right place. Now we just got to mat these guys to hide the workings. So these are the pieces I'm going to use. This piece is going to go right here, but before I put it down, I want to round its edges as well, just like so. Oops, I messed that one up. And again, I'm using sticky tape. Now where the magnet is, I like to put extra tape. So I kind of come up here and put two or three pieces all the way down so that it'll hold that piece in real good for me. Just because pulling and tugging can pull the paper up, so I just like to make sure I have plenty of adhesive there. And then down here, I don't need quite as much, so just a strip there. Don't y'all love how this tape just tears? I love it. Just tear and go, tear and go. All right. Peel off our backers. All right, and then we're ready to put this one down. So I'm just going to lay this on top of that magnet, line it up where it needs to go, top and bottom, and then just press it into place, making sure that my tape has sealed down. You can see the magnet right there, so we have plenty of tape at the top sealing that shut. And now we'll do the top, just like we just did. Now the piece I'm going to use is going to be white on this side, but it's gold on the other. Here's why I'm using it. It's a scrap piece from my paper pad, and instead of just saving this for another project, I'm just going to use it here. It won't hurt anything to have that paper there. Now I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but I have adhesive here and here, and there's a gap in the middle. But because this piece is going to hold um, a magnet, it's going to hold the... Uh, 
it's going to kind of get the pressure from the pulling and the tugging on the envelope. I'm going to go ahead and put another piece of adhesive right in the middle so this piece is almost fully covered. And then we're just going to hide that little piece with this. Something like that. Alright, so now, watch this. We have our magnet closure. Cool, huh? All right, for the top, I've already cut a piece to fit to mat this. This little piece, I don't know if you can see it, it's snowflakes. and it has little gold um, foil in it, so it kind of matches this paper pad. It didn't come with it, but I thought this would be cute not to use solid gold and white everywhere again. All right, I'm going to round the bottom corners of this flap to match this. Now, this one I can use wet glue because I don't need it to be super, super strong to hold those magnets into place. So I'm just going to use some art glitter glue. Put a little glue. It won't be getting any pressure, really. It doesn't have to hold anything into place. So I'll put this guy down. Just like so. And we have a policy pocket. Not too bad, huh? Let's put it in the book. So here's my planner. And this one's going to go on this side. Now, one thing I did do is I did not put it out here, okay? I put it over here. The reason is I don't want to add any bulk to this inside. Remember we talked about that earlier? So I'm going to load this with some liquid glue. And I'm using a lot of liquid glue because this is going to get some weight. And I want to make sure it stays. You can use your sticky tape here. I just think some, when I can use liquid glue, I'm going to use it because it's faster. All right. And then put this guy down. Probably should have used a different paper. But since there's black, you can kind of see the pocket pretty good. All right, now I'm going to close this and let it dry. I'm gonna put the weight of the book on it and let it dry into place and we will get right back together and do some more fun stuff. So our pocket is dried and installed. So now we've got that. We've got one in the front and we got one in the back. So I love that. Now the other thing I wanna show you is how I like to make pockets inside of my um, journals. Now I don't plan on making a lot of pockets inside the journal and the reason for that is I don't want it to bulk up because I do plan to maybe um, staple some things in place or maybe even tape some stuff down on pages. And too many pockets will bulk it, but I'm gonna show you how I make them. Um, you may have seen a um, composition book I did a long, long time ago, and I will link that video below. And there were some pockets in there and I get lots of questions about those pockets. So I'm gonna show you what I do. Okay, so I'm gonna come back here to the to-do section. And I'm going to make a folder in the very back before I get to the journal. Just kind of in the middle of the book, just, just for me. And the big thing is I just want to show you how I make it. You're going to need four pages to do it, okay? So the first thing you're going to do is separate out your four pages. So I have two on this side and two on this side. And now what I want to do is working on the back of the page, I want to fold this top corner down to the red line. Okay, so there's that little red line in the margin. I'm going to line that paper up and fold it down and create this angle. All right, so you see that angle that we've created there? And I folded it backwards. There's a reason for that. Make sure you fold this flap down, okay? Now you want to take your other two pages on the opposite side and fold them the opposite way. So I'm just going to line that up on the red line and line up your... Um, your folds for both pages because they're gonna that's gonna make your pocket okay so now we have all of these pages with that angled fold I hope that makes sense I think it does now what you want to do is come behind here and glue these guys down so I'm gonna glue this top page down this is not a permanent it's not something that um, you need to really worry about this is just stick some glue just to keep that in place we're gonna cover this with paper so all this is doing is holding that into place that's all we're trying to do there all right so I'm gonna flip this one back and then I'm gonna do another one I'm just gonna come and put some glue here and glue that section down just that first little page and then I'm gonna glue the second page to it because it'll flop up if you don't all right so that's just to keep those out of our way now we want to create some cute cardstock to go on top of here to hide it. You can go ahead at this point and seal this shut. Let's do that because we'll, we'll go ahead and seal it shut. Here's how I seal it shut. I'm going to take my glue and I'm going to run it around the bottom of the page, making sure I have a nice consistent stream of the glue because you don't want any holes in your pocket. Okay, so anywhere the glue doesn't line up, you want to make sure you go back and do it. And then you're just going to shut that on top of it and let that dry. That's going to create your pocket, but we want to, like I said, put a cover on this so that it doesn't look like just folded back pieces of paper. So here's how we do that. You're going to measure first. 
Now remember, I don't like to take the page all the way into here because these composition books get really thick. However, for the folder, I think it will look good to get really close. So I'm going to cut this piece to 7 and 1 8 Okay, and that still gives me some room right there. And then I think this is nine and three quarters like everything else. Yep. So seven one eight by nine and three quarters. Now what I want to do, I'm going to go back to that and we need to do a little bit more measuring. Not a whole lot, just a tiny thing. We want to measure from this corner or where this angle starts to where our page will be here. So we'll know where to start our angle cut. So we're going to take our ruler and that is one and one quarter inch. So I want to come in on the top of the page, let me get that paper and show you what I'm talking about. I want to come in one and one quarter inch at the top, okay? Now we need to discover how far up we need to go. So I'm going to measure here to this angle. All right, I want to make sure you can see that in the camera. And that is three and, let's move that up a little bit. That is three and um, seven eighths. All right, so here's what we do. We measure and make a mark. An inch and a quarter at the top. So an inch and a quarter here. And then three and seven eighths to the side. Let me just put that where it needs to go. And then make a mark there. Okay, now then we're just gonna run our paper slicer from one mark to the other mark. So we'll line this first mark up in our line, in our cutting mark, and the second mark up. And this is how we'll get our angle cut. Move that in a little bit. Now, this may not be perfect the first time. You can come back and make changes. Now, once you have your first piece cut, your second piece, you need to flip it over because you want that angle to be different. Learn from my mistake. You can see I'm using a different paper now because I already made this mistake. Then, we're just going to line it up in here and follow that previous cut. That'll be easier. We won't have to do all the markings if you um, when you do that. Okay, so now that we've got this piece ready, all we need to do is round this one corner to match all the other ones we've been doing, and those have been one quarter inch in the book. So there's that corner rounded. And now we want to round the correct corner on this side, which is going to be this bottom corner here. And then we can glue these into place and cover up our workings. I'll put the glue here. Make sure you put a nice bead of glue along this edge because you want that to seal shut. You don't want that to come loose because that can be a problem when you try to put stuff in the pocket. All right, so then we put this first piece into place. I always like to line up the bottom and the outer edge first. And then seal that down. So see how we didn't go exactly to the edge? We left ourselves a little bit of room. So there is that, and then we're going to flip this over. Now, I'm sh you guys may have seen me do these pockets in other um, tutorials. I know I did one, I think I did one in my planner. Now I don't remember if I did or not. I'm sure I did because I like to have pockets. Okay. Line up the bottom first and the side. Just like so. And then seal that down. And then it's always good too to kind of shut the book and let everything kind of dry all at one time. So that is that. Now I want to do a little bit of stuff to the front. Not a whole lot. And the reason is this. I don't want to do any dimension because I don't want it to catch on anything. But here's what I'm going to do. I've got a couple of Wink Stella pens and I think this will be neat. And I also have, let me find it here, one of those Jelly Roll glitter pens. Um, is this my glitter or my white one? Where's my glitter? Here it is. Okay. <laughs> I might use the white one too. Okay. So here's what my plan is. Where these red leaves are, there are two different colors of red. I'm going to just kind of put some Wink of Stella on there and just make them glittery and cute. But this way I'm not adding any dimension to the page, but I'm still getting some Christmas colors. And, you know, kind of some shimmer without doing too awful much extra work. Just kind of painting. I think that'll be cute. And I'm just kind of going through and doing separate petals. I think I'm going to do the petals differently. I 
I don't know. I kind of like it with the red. So I'm going to go ahead and do all the red flowers with this. With the red Wink of Stella. This is a brush Wink of Stella, by the way. And it. Um, a lot of people ask me what I'm saying. I'm saying Wink of Stella pen. I got these from Amazon. And I really like them. I think they're um, the best way to use glitter. Because I don't like loose glitter at all. And this gets it done. So see the shimmer? I hope you guys can see it. These don't show up on camera very well. All right, I'm going to do all the red flowers with this red Wink of Stella. Now I'm taking this clear one and I'm going to do some on this on the yellow parts of the flower here. And I'm just kind of swirling it on there just to get some glitter. And on that red flower, I didn't color every single petal. I just did some stripes of the glitter because those petals were pretty big. And I also didn't want to get into that the white dots on the page. So I just kind of did some glitter there. And now I'm going to take this glitter pen, which is so cool because you'll really be able to see it. And I'm just going to kind of do some lines in these flowers just to glitter up the page. Do as much as you want or as little. It's your book and you're going to use it for the season. So make yourself happy with it. And then I'm going to go through here and put some of this shimmer detail through this plant. Just adding some shimmer. Like I said, I printed this on plain printer paper, so that's why I wanted to jazz it up a little bit for Christmas. This is not hard to do to add the glitter like this. Super easy. And I'm getting a shimmer. Maybe it'll show in pictures. I hope it will. All right, I think I'm going to come in here and do some in the middle. Just maybe a circle and a circle. And then come back and color in these dots. So hopefully in pictures you'll be able to see the shimmer that I added. I think that it's really pretty. Let's see if you can see any of it like this. I'm not sure. All right, let's do a quick walkthrough of our journal. Here's what we've got. It's the journal. We have a pocket at the front. And you can do any other embellishing you want to. I'm going to keep this simple because, like I said, I'm only going to use this for this season. Now, if I want to, I can come back and add in photos and things like that if I want to add those too. So, I've got my note section. I've got my November calendar, my December calendar. Got a little glue there. Got my budget, shopping lists, gift guide area. That's going to be fun. Um, crafts that I want to make section. And remember, we made our pocket here so we can put things inside of this folder pocket and our journal section. Also, I have my to-do list on the back because like I told you, I like to run to my to-do list first and then we have another pocket in the back. Now, you can get as fancy as you want. I will link my planner video, my other composition book video, anything that I think you guys might want to see that's kind of based around this, I'll link that below. And then, these make great gifts. Not necessarily the Christmas themed one, but the, pro the planners or the project books would be a great gift or even a journal. Thanks guys for watching. We finished this one in two videos. I will see you guys on Monday where next week, by the way, is collab week for me. I have a collab on Monday, on Wednesday, and Friday. So be sure to check back on those. Those are going to be super fun, and maybe you'll meet a crafter that you haven't um, known before. Thanks so much. Have a great weekend. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.